Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from AzureAutomation.com and welcome to another video of our Selenium C Sharp with .NET Core series. So we have been talking about Selenium C Sharp with Specflow and we have discussed a lot of discussion so far until our last video. And uh, I'm always getting this question from students asking what is this Specflow's context injection or the dependency injection is all about and how to work with that. Um, I mean, I have covered that in my basic series in YouTube. So if you just go to the uh, YouTube over here, you can see there is something called as BDD and Specflow video series, which has got the context injection. I think I covered this in December 2014. Um, I think it's almost six years now. So yeah, I covered it over there. And uh, and it's exactly the same thing I have also covered in my advanced uh, series. If you have already purchased my advanced series courses, or if you're already watching this video in the advanced series, then you are already going to be exposed to this concept pretty quickly. Uh, but, but yes, this is what is dependency injection is all about. And in the advanced series, I also talked about a lot of detail on how you can use this context injection in a more better fashions and how to handle the driver context in more better fashion uh, using the singleton patterns and stuff. I mean, those are something I've covered uh, later in this series, in the advanced series. But if you are watching this video on the basic uh, course, probably uh, on the YouTube, then you would have, uh, then you are going to be getting just the context injection details that we are going to be discussing right now. So what is this context injection? Why do we really require context injection in Specflow? That is the first question we need to ask. Well, dependency injection or the context injection is a, is a most advanced uh, or most useful concept, which is there for pretty long time. It is not pretty specific to Specflow. And if you have heard about Spring Boots, the IOC containers, those are completely on the dependency injection. So the whole idea of the Spring Boot is to uh, is to resolve the dependency for you automatically, so that you can just focus on the business uh, work rather focusing on the dependencies and how the objects are going to be created and those stuff. So that's the whole idea of the Spring Boot, and that's why it's created and uh, it's been evolved from the concept of the IOC container or the inversion of controls uh, concept. And that's exactly what we'll be discussing in this uh, Specflow's context injection as well. So uh, the Specflow context injection is all about how you're going to be handling an object which you're going to be using uh, in one class to another class. For instance, in this series, we talked about how we can actually uh, uh, move the object, which is nothing but the uh, web driver object from one class file to another class file. We couldn't be able to do that. We created this driver helper class uh, and then we tried to uh, access the object from one class to another class uh, using its base class concept and we used the static iWeb driver to access the uh, web driver which was not that great. I mean that's not the right way of doing it. So instead of doing it in that fashion we are actually going to be using the context injection of the spec flow which is going to make things more better. So if you could see this particular code that we have written, the driver helper it actually has the iWeb driver, which is a static uh, variable. And uh, you can see that within this particular hooks uh, one.cs file, we actually have a driver helper base class and we are accessing the driver something like this. And we are using the same idea for the different uh, places as well, like in these steps we have called this driver helper uh, and in the home page we are calling this driver helper and the login page which is not the right way of doing it actually i mean there are different ways in the advanced concept as i told uh in the advanced series i've covered like the driver we can handle using the singleton pattern of c sharp which is also a much better way of doing it uh, uh, but here we're not going to deal too deep into that because you're already going to be getting those concepts in the uh, in the advanced series but uh, but yes we are going to be covering in a different fashion here so what we will be doing actually on the on the context injection side is uh, we are going to be uh, writing the context injection of spec flow in this particular code. So first of all, what is this context injection? How are we going to be doing that? There are two rules to follow in the context injection. The first one is we need to create a constructor uh, and then we should initialize a, uh, a variable over there on the constructor. That's it. And the same variable has to be initialized in all the class files where the variable has to be called and you can use it. That's it. 
I mean, those things you can do only in a class which is decorated by specflows binding attribute. It doesn't make sense. It's very confusing. Uh, we'll work on that. So what is what I really mean about this uh, creation of constructor is the first thing which I'm going to be doing on the on the contest injection is I'm going to go all the way over here in the driver helper class, which is a static member. And that's the reason, as I told, we have to invoke this everywhere and remove this guy. And once I do that, we'll get a series of error anyways. Uh, so if you see the error list, we're already starting to get some error, which is OK, because we're going to be fixing that. Uh, and then we are actually going to go to this uh, particular home page. I'm going to get rid of this guy uh, and go into the login page. I'm going to get rid of this guy. And now you can ask me, like, where is this driver coming from then? Well, as I told you, we need to create a constructor. Uh, I mean, I'm going to go to this uh, hooks.cs file here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this one. And first of all, make sure that uh, you have the existing source code. If not, you can get it from the GitHub. But actually, I'm going to check in this code. So you should be getting this code, which is going to be available on the GitHub already. So it is already in the main branch. I'm actually working on the main branch. So, so yeah, that's what is going to happen. So I'm going to create a constructor as hook one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this driver helper of underscore driver helper. Uh, I'm going to make this as a private variable here. Oops. Uh, and I'm actually going to use probably a um, initialization here, like driver helper, driver helper of underscore driver helper is equal to driver helper. So this is how you do initialization of in a constructor for a particular variable, right? So you can use the expression bodied member, which makes the code even more simpler. As you can see over here, just two lines looks pretty neat. And this is what I require actually. So using this driver helper, I can actually go to this driver and I can replace this to driver helper dot driver. So this way you can see that I actually am going to be starting to work with the instance of an object which I have initialized. So I'm going to get rid of this driver helper as well. So you can see that now we're not even working with the driver helper that how we were working before. And if I go to these steps, probably I'm going to copy these two lines because I am going to do the same thing on the steps as well, the login steps. And over here, I'm going to be pasting this particular constructor. So I'm going to create a new constructor for the login steps as well. I'm going to initialize the driver helper. And that's exactly what we're going to be replacing. So I'm going to get rid of this driver helper from here. And we're going to call something like this. So you can see that we are trying to replace our existing code with this particular driver helper. And now uh, what I'm going to do is uh, because we have this particular driver helper right now, you should see that this code is going to work. But because we have these kinds of error here, we have to fix this as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably replace these guys over here. I'm going to put this code cut this code, paste it over here. And within this constructor, I'm going to be passing the driver helper dot driver. So you may ask like, we don't even have any constructor, which is going to accept this thing. So I'm going to create a constructor or generate a constructor uh, with the fields probably on the home page over here. You can see that it's been created. Uh, I'm probably going to replace that to driver so that it's going to align with our existing code. Uh, actually, it's a private variable, so it should be underscore driver, though. I mean, I'm using a bad coding practice here. Just sorry, just ignore me for now. And uh, with fields. And let's go to the login page as well. So this is going to be driver and we're going to be replacing this guy to the driver that's it so now you can see that our code is actually been fixed like how it should be 
Uh, and of course, we're getting some error on the home page department and the login page department. We need to fix that as well. I'm going to be creating those home page and login page uh, like that and get rid of these values that I'm trying to initialize. I'm going to save this and there is some issues going on with the existing code with the combo box. So just don't worry about this combo box yet. I'm not going to be using this combo box over here. I'm not going to be using this particular test as well as I'm going to just ignore this and I'm just going to comment this code for now. Just don't worry about it because we're dealing with the, with the, uh, uh, the context injection and we don't really have to worry about these things at the moment. So looks like we have actually fixed all the issues that uh, that were actually occurring uh, for us while we were trying to make a breaking change in our project. Uh, and we have introduced the context injection already. So now just to recollect once again what we did so far. In the context injection, we tried to actually uh, create a constructor in each and every classes wherever we are going to pass the web driver object from one class to another class file. And for that, we have a driver helper class, which actually has a uh, web drivers or iWeb drivers driver uh, property. And it's a public property, it's not a static property. And this is the class which we're actually using. And because it has the driver, we are actually setting all the values over here so that this before scenario is gonna be the first line which is gonna be called to initialize the driver. And this particular object is going to be passed or the reference is going to be passed across all the class files which is going to have the constructor this one yeah and if you see the login steps we have a constructor which does that for us uh, with the same signature and this value is going to be also uh, holding the chrome drivers uh, variable i mean the instance reference uh, and this is the reference which i'm passing in for the home page and the login page so that both the pages will also get the chrome drivers uh, instance and then we can play around from there that's it hopefully that's very clear and now if i'm going to execute this code uh, hopefully this code should run as well without any problem so i'm just running it now and it should spawn a browser for me mm, let's see what's going to happen Oh yeah, it's completed. So you may ask like, why is it not coming? Because uh, we have already set the headless here probably. I'm gonna command this code and I'm gonna run it again. Just to see if it's gonna open the browser. Yeah, there you go. It opened the browser and it's entering the username and password and it's passed. So this is how we can actually work with a context injection uh, in SpecFlow. And this is one of the inbuilt dependency injection available in specflow which helps us to navigate or propagate the object from one class file to another class files much much easily so that's it guys this is how we can work with the context injections in the specflow and this is one of the important concepts that we need to be knowing while working with the with the specflow's context injection meet you in the next one you guys have a great day